Bryce Harper, you are the man. Have a night, Bryce. Two home runs, four RBIs, and that's enough to give the Phillies a 9-6 to six win over the San Francisco Giants as they win the second game of the series. Bryce Harper, your player of the game. Uh, that was one of the best games I've seen him play this year as the first time in a Phillies uniform that he has hit two home runs in one game, and uh, that is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, we didn't look good to start off the game. True Smiley kind of had a rough outing, but uh, listen, we still won the baseball game. That's all that matters. And, uh, you know, we're still tied with the uh, laughing stock Mets, but that's okay. Um, you know, we're uh, at least we didn't lose, and we're not in fourth place. So that's all that matters. So let's uh, look at the scoring summary in this one. Kevin Plar hit a home run to left field. They gave the Giants a one to nothing lead that was in the bottom of the second inning. Can Corey Dickerson triple to right? Smiley, Harper, and uh, Hoskins scores now 3 1. And Segura hit a sacrifice fly. Dickerson, Dickerson came around to score. That's some fundamental baseball. Sacrifice fly. Something that we don't do too often. Dickerson came around to score. It's now 4 1. Here we go. Richard hit a home run to left. It's now 4 2. Then Pilar grounded out the shortstop. And Posey came around to score. It's now 4 3. Oh my God. Then Bryce Harper hit a home run to right center field. And I get and that traveled 420 feet. And I guarantee you that that ball, that was his 21st home run of the year. I guarantee you that, that ball would have been on top in our, in our in the visitors' bullpen at our ballpark. 420 feet. That was that was great. And uh, Phillies updates and I were talking about it. He told me that ball would have been in our in, in the bullpen at our ballpark. So 5-3. And then Steven Vogt hit a two-run home run that tied up the game. And then Solano singled to, and this is all in about six. Then Solano singled to center. Richard came around the scores now six to five. Oh my, I'm sitting there thinking, oh my goodness gracious. We we just our pitching sucks. Top of the seven, Bryce Harper with a three-run home run. And it was a splash down hit it to right center into the McCovey Cove. And that is not the first time he's done that in his career. Way back in 2014 against the bum pitcher, Hunter Strickland. Bryce Harper launched two home runs in the playoffs to give the Washington Nationals. um, And they obviously lost that series, but he was able to give the the Nationals some home runs in that series. Launched a couple in the McCovey Cove. So that's not the first time he's done in his career. Eight to six Phillies. Then the same inning, JT Real Muto had a sacrifice fly. Hoskins came around to score. It's now nine to six. And that's your ballgame. Nine to six, your final score. Let's talk a little about this Bryce Harper home run. That was his 22nd of the year. 456 feet. You know where that ball would have been in all in um in our ballpark? I mean, I, I can't even imagine. And that would have been upper deck, like close to where he hit his first home run at the Phillies. Almost. I mean, that that was high. It might have even gone even further. I, I need to get that exact distance, but that was unbelievable. 456 feet last night. Bryce is talking about after the games, his former manager, Matt Williams, was used at the Washington. He said, it's not, it doesn't matter how far you hit it. It's a matter, it's, it depends on how many guys you get in. That was a three-run shot. Obviously, he's been hitting a lot of solo shots lately. But this was a three-run shot, and that puts his RBI total to 78. So this is a very good game for Harp. By far, probably the, the, the best game of his. I mean, I guess maybe arguably the game against the Giants was pretty good at home when he hit that walk-off double and that home run he hit. But uh, this was a pretty good game, too. And it wasn't like he just hit it the straightaway right field. I mean, that was right center. That was a right center in the McCovey Cove. I don't think you guys realize how far that is. That is really far. I mean, he hit it right center in McCovey Cove. And that is, that is like the – that's where the big boys live, man. I mean, that is really, really far. So props to Bryce. I'm really, really proud of him. 22nd home run of the year, 78 RBI, 252 batting average. Not bad. Also drew a walk last night, 79th of the year. So let's take a look at the box score in this one. Bryce Harper led off the game today, a leadoff hitter. I told you he does pretty well in the leadoff spot. Started off the game with a strikeout, but he went two for four, three or three runs scored, four RBIs, one walk, two strikeouts, 252 batting average. Obviously, hit those two home runs, driven four, solo shot, and a three run shot. Reese Hoskins went one for four in this one, two runs scored, a walk. Average now 249. Bryce Harper now has passed Reese Hoskins and now has a better batting average. Corey Dickerson uh, went three for five, one one run scored, three RBIs. And tell you, I really like Corey Dickerson a lot. Obviously, I think people are raising their arms saying, well, why isn't Kappa paying him that much? You know, playing him that much. You know, this guy's a great player. 
Well, guys, I think you have to understand that Corey Dickerson has been beat up a lot this year, and he's had a lot of injuries, so I think Gabe Kaplan wants to give him a break. Listen, I'm not a Kaplan fan, but I just want to defend him here. Corey Dickerson has been beat up a lot. So uh, the Kaplan critics out there, they, I, I'm one of them, but I have to say that's not Kaplan's fault. I mean, Corey Dickerson has had some injury bug, some injury problems this year. So I don't have a problem with Corey Dickerson not playing as much. I mean, he's a great player. He's on the field. Trust me. One for four for Segura, an RBI. Obviously, the sack fly, a strikeout. JT Remuto went one for three on their RBI, a walk. Cesar, 0 for 5. He's been in the midst of a really bad slump. Has had a horrible low chip, two strikeouts. Scott Kringer, 0 for 4, two strikeouts. Had a, had a quiet day at the plate. Adam Hazley, 1 for 4. I like this kid a lot. Two strikeouts. And uh, Drew Simone, 0 for 1 with a run scored and a walk. Sean Rodriguez uh, walked and scored a run, obviously on the Bryce Harper. Home run and Brad Miller pinch hit and went to one for one. Let's take a look at the pitching in this one. Drew Smiley at five and two thirds, seven hits, six runs, only four of them earned, three walks, four strikeouts, three home runs. Even an opposite Gore made an error, and so did Adam Hazley. We kind of had some some uh, some sloppy play in this one in the field, uh, or it the Segura. Wait a second. Uh, we only made one error, but I know that Segura mis, misplayed a ball. So um, that was my mistake. So, uh, but yeah, we did have some. We did. We could kind of misplay some some um, some balls there. Uh, I I said it's a, yeah. Segura did make an error, by the way, guys. Yeah, he did make an error. But it had him hastily misplayed a ball in left field. He totally misread it. I got it confused. I apologize about that. It's errors are going to happen. Uh, Segura just totally just was just totally kicked that ground ball. Now as he got up the air, but Adam Hazley just totally misplayed the ball in. The outfield, and uh, so that's why only two of them were earned. Uh, uh, Jose Alvarez, the third in the inning, two hits. Uh, Mike Morin in inning, one hit. Rachel Schwartz in inning, one hit. Hector Neris in inning, and two strikeouts. And he was able to get the save in this within his 20th of the season. And that is pretty much it, guys. The field is 196. Bryce Harper, your Phillies hot stove player of the game here. Um, Yes, the Phillies got uh, 10 hits. The Giants actually got 11. So the, the Giants actually out hit the Phillies in this one. So, wow. That was quite a game. That was probably one of the best games of the year. Um, so, hit one in the McCovey Cove. That is fun. I mean, that's why he did not go there, first of all. I mean, that is a hitter's worst nightmare at that at Oracle Park. I'll tell you what. I mean, uh, I always want to say AT&T Park because that was the old name of the stadium. Uh, but that is a hitter's worst nightmare there. And he was able to just totally just – and some guy was yelling overrated. It's not the first time in Harper's career that, you know, he's had some – you know, he's, uh, you know, kind of just called out the fans. You know, some guy was yelling overrated, hit a home run on the very next pitch. So I think that was last year, and he did it again this year. He pointed at the guy, did the shh thing, totally shut up the Giants fans, booing them. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Harper is just – this is why we signed him. We signed him to be that kind of player. And we signed him to go out there and hit those two home runs. Two home runs last night, twenty second of the year. Home runs just kind of go up a little bit, guys. They they really are. He's been hitting some home runs. I said, I forgot to mention this a couple of days ago. I said that he would homer in the Arizona series. I was right. I said he would hit at least a home run on this road trip. I was right. He's hit three. And guess what, boys? We only have uh, we only, we still have two games left of the series. So. Uh, yeah, there's still a lot of work that could be done here. So uh, he could maybe he could crank another one out maybe in the next two days. That'd be really cool. Uh, but, you know, he, I think he feels a lot of pressure in that Citizens Bank Park to really produce. So we'll see what happens. As he said, he, loved, he likes to hear more booze and cheers. So uh, let's see what happens there. Let's talk about the teams in our division. The Sean Doolittle of the Washington Nationals blew a game against the New York Mets yesterday. And I'm so sick and tired fearing about the New York Mets. I really am. They're, they're not a good baseball team. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if we're tied with them. We are a better team than they are. They are trash. Look at what they did in June. They're just on a high streak right now. I really don't care. They're not going to the playoffs. So everyone just needs to sh cool their jets and shut up because they're not going anywhere this year. So I don't care what – and they're not going anywhere next year anytime soon, does that matter. So I don't care what anyone says. Their GM is a blowhard. Their organization is trash. I don't care what anyone says. They're a trash team, so – they're not going anywhere. They, they lowly Mets, as I like to say. Um, and I'm not worried about them. So I don't care if they've been playing pretty good baseball. 
they have, but uh, it means it's, it's not. I don't want to say it's not relevant, which it's, it kind of is because they've had a, they've made a major major impact in the standings. But I still am not impressed. I still do not think they're a good baseball team. I think they their schedule has been pretty easy as of late. You know, and I understand they won yesterday against Washington, who is a good team, but they barely even won that one, and they were trailing, and they had a comeback win against Sean Doolittle. You know, it wasn't like they had a comeback win against some elite closer. You know, Sean Lewis is a nice closer. I'm not saying that at all. He's a good closer. He's better than any reliever on this ball and, and, and the Phillies. I guarantee you that right now. Uh, but uh, it doesn't really mean it much to me than what the Mets are doing. The Mets are just not a good baseball team, unlike the Atlanta Braves and the Washington Nationals. The Atlanta Braves and the Washington Nationals are a better baseball team than the New York Mets. That's that's very uh, that's very self-evident. Um, and the Atlanta Braves defeated the Miami Marlins at the four yesterday. Uh, so I'd much rather, I'm definitely rooting for those Braves against them when they play the Mets, uh, because I just want the Mets to go settle back into reality. And I need these people to shut up and accept that they're not a good baseball team. Cause this is the only thing they've had to cheer about all this year. And I don't want to make this video a rant video because you know, the Phillies won last night, Bryce Harper had a good game. So I don't really don't want to make this a rage video. It just kind of pisses me off about what these stupid Met fans are saying about their team. I mean, it, listen, I guess they could be happy because they've had nothing to cheer about all this year because this year has been an absolute trash year. It's been an absolute dumpster fire. I'll tell you what, they are so cocky right now. They're flying high. I could give two craps. Let them have their little fun. Uh, just think about what they did in June. Just keep that in mind. Very inconsistent. Even if they do even do something this year, they're so inconsistent because they have potential to be that bad. So just remember that. They have the potential to be that bad. And you're not going to be a successful team if you do that every year. Think about it. Last year they did it. Had a dumpster fire like June and July. This year, dumpster fire June and July. Next year, probably going to do it too, hopefully. So the Mets don't scare me. They really don't. I don't care what they've been doing the past however games. The Nationals and the Braves scare me. The Mets don't. I tell you what, I'd much, much rather see the, the Braves and the Nats win than the, than the Mets. I guarantee you that. Mets are just a joke. I just can't stand the New York fans, and I don't know why I'm even talking about this anymore. I just wanted to just kind of just vent to you guys because I'm just so sick and tired of hearing about the New York Mets. I really, I am so done with it. I am, I'm, they, I've written them off a long, long time ago. So I don't care what they're doing. They are not a good baseball team. I uh, don't care. Don't want to hear it. Hands down, not a good baseball team. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, Oh, yeah, I wanted to add one more thing. First of all, I want to talk about Reese Hoskins. Now, there's a very interesting stat here that I wanted to share with you all. Now, Reese Hoskins has been known in his career as a pull hitter. I mean, he's a right-handed hitter. He's a power hitter. Most, you know, most power hitters, depending on what side of the plate they're on, like to pull the ball. Bryce Harper likes to pull the ball to right field. Reese Hoskins likes to pull the ball to left field. So let's look at this stat. Shall we? Reese Hoskins has been a bit, a bit of a bit of a slump. Yesterday or two days ago, I think it was now, the guy on YouTube, the announcer, I don't know what is it. He used to be the Miami Marlins announcer, actually. Uh, G, Derek Jeter fired him as as one of his many fires. As one of his – that was not even a word. I said one of his many fires. Oh, my God. One of the many people that Derek Jeter fired. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so um, – he actually was broadcast in that game. Yeah, I recognized his voice from watching like some Marlins highlights, like the Giancarlo Stanton highlights, and you know, in the past. Look, let's look at this stat. So, Reese Hoskins during his career, home runs. He's hit 56 home runs to the left field. He's had a 997 slugging percentage. Center field, he's hit 16 with a 494. Uh, I was at one of those games when he hit at the center. I saw one of those 16 home runs. Guess how many he's hit to right field? Four. Four. With a 380 sucking percentage. That is god awful. God awful. And people want to sit here and knock Harper and say, well, you know, he's probably just as bad. Well, recently he has been. But during the course of his career, he was hitting the ball all fields, like in 15. Six, like not 16, uh, more like 15, 13, and especially in his rookie year in 2012, he was hitting the ball all over the park. Breeze Hoskins, he's been like that consistently his whole entire career. I mean, four home runs, that is a joke. A 380 slugging, that is terrible. Terrible. 
compared to what he's doing in the left field, 56 dongs with 997 slugging. The, the 380 slugging, that to right, I mean, that's terrible. I'm sorry. That is terrible. And even the numbers to center aren't any, any, any better. 16, obviously, compared to four is better. But the slugging, 380 to 4, 494. And the slugging, look at it. It goes 380, which is to right. And it goes 494, which is to center. And then you have 997, which is to left. And obviously, as I said, the right-handed batters, like the right-handed power hitters, like to pull the ball to their field, which is left field. The right-handed power hitters like to pull their ball to right field, obviously. So, you know, you look at the power hitter, your average left-handed power hitter, he's obviously going to have more home runs to left field. That's just very self-evident. That's very self-evident. But that, I mean, you you think at least hit more than four to right, right? You think that he's hit at least more home, more than four home runs to right field. You think so. But that's exactly what is what he's done. Four home runs to right with a 380s uh, slugging percentage. That is god awful. I'm sorry. And I remember one of those home runs you get to right against the Yankees, I think, last year. And I can't remember all the other ones. You know why? Because he barely even hits a home run to right field. So that's why I don't remember it. So, I mean, this guy, Reese Hoskins. I, mean, I like Reese Hoskins a lot. But I heard the one guy he said yesterday. He said he's had a terrific year. I, I don't agree with that. I really don't. I mean, he said 69 RBIs, which is pretty good, 24 home runs. But he's just such a pull hitter. And I understand, as I said, your average power hitter today, as I said this before, is going to hit the ball. He's going to be a pull hitter. You look at Bryce. You look at, you know, now Reese. Like they're, 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 they pull the ball. Now, Kristen Yelich and, and, you know, Cody Bellinger and obviously Mike Trout, they hit the ball all over the park. Obviously, they're more prone. And obviously, even though Mike Trout hits the ball all over the park, he – He's still an average one home runs to left field. That goes with any player. But there's some more than others. More, Some are more extreme than others. Christian Yelich, obviously, and Cody Bellinger are both probably, I know this for a fact, average one home runs to right field. But they still find a way to hit more home runs, more home runs than four to left field. I guarantee that they don't have four home runs to left field, unlike Reese. And this is why Reese – isn't having a high batting average because he's trying to pull everything. And, I, and Harper is too. But Harper's isn't as bad as Reese. Harper's still, obviously, I think this year, obviously, as he's gotten his career progressed on, he's been more of a pull hitter. But I mean, this stat is so damning. Look at it. 56 homers to left with a 997 OP, uh, slugging percentage and a Four home, a whopping four home runs in a 380 slugging. Man, that is so different. One, it's so different. It just totally blows my mind, guys. It really does. So that's pretty much it. I just want to make that comment. I mean, I really don't think he's had a terrific year. I mean, they talk about his open on base percentage, which is pretty good. His OPS is pretty good. It's not. It's like eight. It's like 890, but it's not a thousand. Uh, and his average is like 250. Same with Bryce. I honestly think. Bryce has driven in more runs. He's only two home runs away from tying Reese. I honestly think, I boys, I honestly think we could see Bryce Harper finish with a higher home run total than Reese Hoskins this year. Looks like Harper might pass him. Unless Hoskins proves me wrong. I just wanted to say that. I just want to talk. I forgot to talk about it yesterday. It would have been a perfect video. It would have been perfect to talk about that yesterday because I kind of put a damper on this mood of this, of this nice win last night. But uh, I just it needed to be talked about. So guys, that is pretty much it. Sixty and fifty six is the Phillies' record. Uh, so uh, there, I said it's pretty much it. Big win for the Phillies, sixtieth win of the season. So guys, that is uh, pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please smash the like in this video. Please tell all your friends about these videos. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please subscribe. Please turn on the notification bell as well. Social media link in the description below. My second channel on YouTube. My Twitter account and my Instagram account, my Phillies Hostive account, and my Bryce Harper fan page, all in the link in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for all the support. The Phillies win the uh, win last night, nine to one last night, nine to six. Your final score today. They will be in San Francisco, four or five. The first pitch, Velasquez against Samarja. And we already saw that uh, that did not go well last time. We like, got shot. I think we lost five to one. So guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you all so much for watching. I am Luke, and let's go Phillies. Talk to you all later. Bye.